What's next for Jujutsu Kaisen? With the last chapter finally being released and the story actually being over as far as we know it, what's next for Jujutsu Kaisen? Obviously in 2025 we will more than likely have season 3 of the anime adaptation. In December we also have the global release of Phantom Parade and sometime this year we'll get the Shibuya DLC for Curse Clash but nobody really cares about that except for me. And also in December we get the final volumes, volume 29 and volume 30 releasing on the same day. That's cool and everything but what actually happens to the main story? Will there be a sequel? Who knows, besides Gege. We know there'll be an announcement of some sort regarding Jujutsu Kaisen at Jump Festa 2025, but in regards to a sequel, it's kind of hard to tell. If we're judging by strictly what we saw in the manga, it kind of feels like there should be a sequel, in the sense that why the hell would Gege bring up the new Shadow style and all this stuff with Kusakabe, as well as the clans going crazy. It just feels kind of strange to end the entire series with a mission between our favourite trio, while also just beforehand also showing us all this stuff to do with the possible warring clans and all this other stuff. If there was a possible sequel in the works, at some point, I obviously think Gage is going to take a little break for a while, if there was a sequel, there are endless places for the story to go, right? The place I would personally like the story to go, there's one of two places. We have the possibility of a clan civil war between the Gojo and the Kamo clan. Two clans that are kind of question marks to the entire world building of Jujutsu Kaisen. We don't really know much about them. We know Kamo exists and they like blood manipulation. But beyond that, we don't really have a lot of things to go about them. Besides Kenjaku once took over their clan leader. And this old guy that Kenjaku knows is also in the Kamo clan, I guess. We also have the Gojo clan. And now the annoying thing about the Gojo clan is that the most we know about them is all through Q&As and stuff with Gege. And it's only kind of a byproduct about the Q&A being about Gojo. So we, the only stuff we know about the Gojo clan is a byproduct of knowing about Gojo. Like we know that he has a mother and father, probably cares for them, but he grew up away from them and stuff like that. But we know for a fact that the Gojo clan themselves outside of Gojo aren't exactly very strong. But because of Gojo they're kind of like carried in the Jujutsu world. But that's not the only place for the story to go. Obviously, given the fact that we got the stuff with Mei Mei and the new Shadow style, which kind of felt very much out of nowhere for some reason, since we got that just before the end of the series, it felt like it was planting seeds for a sequel. However, there is another place for the story to go, possibly if Gege were to make a sequel. Now, what is that? Well, throughout the course of Jujutsu Kaisen, we obviously spend a mass, well, all of our time in Japan for obvious reasons, right? Because curses and sorcerers are... 99.9999% all in Japan. Curses, sorcerers, everything cursed energy is in Japan. With the exception of two people that we know of, right? We have Miguel, who is from Africa. And we have, this is a niche one that I like to bring up all the time, Momo's father, who was stated to be an American-born sorcerer. Which is kind of weird, because if he's American-born, how did the rest of the world not know about cursed energy and stuff like that? It was from an old, like, fan book question, so maybe Gege just forgot, but... You know, who knows? But that goes to show that there are sorcerers all over the rest of the world. It's not just in Japan. And that could possibly lead into the trio going all over the world to fight cursed users instead of this random stalker in Japan. Because I feel like going around the world and fighting sorcerers would be a hell of a lot more interesting than catching this one guy who can make your eyes bigger. Like, it's... <sighs> It felt like a Mr. Smiley episode from My Hero. Not not the ending to the actual series. It felt like a, a miss to me, if I'm honest. Obviously, if there were a sequel, we know there are places where it won't go. For example, people have misinterpreted the ending in a very bad way. People have been very stupid, right? People saw... Well, not very stupid, they've just not read the panels closely enough. People saw the final page of the entire series being this Sukuna finger, right? Sukuna's not coming back, okay? <laughs> First of all. That's the main issue people have. People interpret it as this Attack on Titan-esque ending where it's a, it's a cycle of violence and it'll keep on going and someone's going to eat this finger and then Sukuna's going to come back, blah, 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 blah. But if they interpret the final page that way, they've completely misinterpreted the final page before that with Sukuna and Mahito and Uraume. And we know one finger isn't enough for Sukuna to come back, right? He says they're not dangerous anymore, which we can interpret as, you know, a 20th of his soul on its own existing in this realm isn't enough for him to actually come back. And as we saw, the afterlife in Jujutsu Kaisen is very strange and very case by case. But in this version we saw, we see this is like the most clear interpretation of a character moving on. Mahito literally says that he just resides here by choice. He sticks around, he refuses to move on. And we literally see Sukuna and Uraume walking away from him. He's literally moving on. His soul is passing, 
So if someone ate that Sukuna finger, they'd probably just get like a raw cursed energy buff. They're not gonna get like they're not gonna become a new vessel, right? They're not gonna become a new, become anything like a new Culling Games player, where they like you know, become a different person. It's nothing like that, right? So some people have thought, oh, if there's a sequel, it's just gonna be Sukuna again. No, that's that's not happening. If you think that, read the chapter again, bro. Come on. Another place far to go that kind of links into the globe trotting possible sequel is the fact that the rest of the world now knows about cursed energy, which is a huge deal. Like, we saw a bunch of American soldiers talk about it. We saw Kenjaku reveal it to, like, the UN and a bunch of world leaders. And they talked about capturing Gojo to fuel an entire country. So now the rest of the world is aware of cursed energy and views it as, like, a more literal energy source. Right? I mean, we see them capture Culling Games players and stuff like that. Like, Reggie's minions or whatever the fuck. So, it is possible that, you know, for a sequel, it's going to be, you know, kind of like One Piece in the sense that it's going to be sorcerers fighting the government, literally, virtue of the fact that they want to capture sorcerers and use them as batteries. Kind of similar to the way that people with blessings are in Fire Punch. You know, they're just going to be captured and used as batteries, I guess. That's another potential way for the story to go. Is it likely? God knows. Simply due to the fact that it feels like a plot point that Gege just kind of dropped. Like, there are plenty of plot points where I feel like a story could continue from, but they were just kind of dropped. Like, we had all the stuff with Angel and the Fallen One that was never never clarified, and it's never going to be clarified now because Sukuna's not here. We have the stuff with the Fujiwara clan. Since Sukuna's not here, it's probably not going to be explained. Yes, Angel is, and she's from, like, the Ame clan or whatever, but... That won't be explained, Sugiwara no Michizane won't be explained in the context of JJK, I know he's a Japanese figure, but he won't be explained in the, like, as one of the three ventral spirits or whatever. All the context regarding Kenjaku, uh, it is kind of strange to think that there were so many questions about Kenjaku that we will never get answered now. Even if there is a guidebook, it will feel very strange to get all our answers about him from that. Like, we do know we are getting a guidebook at some point in October, I think it is, I'll have to check. Unfortunately, if we get all these, like, we get a bunch of missing plot points for the story about specifically stuff about Hinjaku and stuff like that. If we just get that from a guidebook, it will feel very flat and like unfortunate. Like as I say, the way JJK ended in the final few chapters, it felt as if it was building up for something more, right? Specifically with the new Shadow style stuff. The chapter in which Sukuna died is literally called Finale, right? And the chapters after that just feel like extra stuff more build up you could have ended with Sukuna's death and had them meet up the chapters after Sukuna's death you literally cannot spoil besides maybe Sukuna's passing those chapters just feel like padding and fan service which is fine but in there we also got as I said the stuff about the clans and the new shadow style why would Gege bring this up in the final three four chapters for there not to be a sequel here's the problem with Gege as a writer which may lead people to believe that this might not be leading into a sequel, it's just Gege explaining, explaining something to the audience that we really didn't care to be explained. Gege has these character relationships and like JJK law in his head about the clans, about character relationships. He has all this in his head, but his problem is that he assumes the audience just knows it. Like he assumes we know why Kenjaku and Tengen were friends. He assumes why we know Miwa would be in the Culling Games. He just assumes he would know this and would be surprised by it, but we literally have no reason like, we don't know unless we get a sequel, or oh, God forbid it's explained in a, gu a guidebook. We'll never know the answer to these. So, maybe there'll be a sequel, maybe there'll not be. It feels like Gege was trying to make the ending seem like the literal final chapter. He made it try to seem like a finality. Like, he tried to make it seem final, like it was an end. I mean, how can you look at the last few pages and not think that it's the end, right? We see Sukuna literally passing on. We see, like, all Gojo's students, you know, smiling and happy. It's supposed to be final. It's not like Chainsaw Man where Denji appears again and it says, Part 2 coming soon. It's nothing like that. It says, thank you for reading, thank you for supporting Gege, 10 million copies sold, whatever, and that's it. It feels as if Gege isn't, set isn't setting up for a sequel. However, Jump might force him to. But we'll see. At this point, I just want to know who the fuck Usami was. I just want to find out how Kenjaku even found Jin, because does that mean Jin has been constantly reincarnated over hundreds of years? I want to find out why you Miwa was in the Culling Games, right? Why? How did Tengen and Kenjaku know each other? Is there any more sorcerers outside of Japan besides Miguel and Momo's father? I mean, we know Nanami is like ha, his great his grandfather is Danish or some something like that. We have Charles, who's like half French, Japanese. Like they are sorcerers, aren't purely Japanese. Can we learn more about them? Who knows? There's two sides to it. There's the side in which the ending itself 
feels final and it feels like an ending. Like, Gege was trying to literally end the series here in the most literal way. Everyone's happy. It's a happy ending for everyone. But on the other side of that, we have so many question marks about the world that this st story takes place in that it doesn't feel right to just end it here. There's still too many question marks, in my opinion. I'm not like a, f like a lot of other people who want to know more about Sukuna's past. I'm okay with learning about that by proxy of finding more about the Hain era and, you know, the, the Fujiwara clan or whatever. I, I would be fine with that, but there's still so many questions just about the world of JJK. There's still so many questions in this world that... I hope we get an answer to, and I hope it's just not in a guidebook. I, I hope, I pray, but yeah, that was just me rambling for about 10 minutes. Uh, toodles my doodles, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace.